Hey all, Neo once again from the Overclocker magazine. Today, I bring you my first experience with the Arctic Cooling Freezer 3 AIO unit. Now, it's just dawned on me that outside of the thermal paste, this is the first Arctic Cooling product I've ever used. And for a first impression, I don't think it could have turned out any better. Before performance and all that stuff though, let's consider the visuals and the installation process. As with most recent AIOs, the fans are pre-installed, making it a lot easier to get up and running. The fans, unlike on recent AIOs I've tested like the Corsair IQ Link or the Gigabyte Water Force, use traditional cables as opposed to magnets or other simplified link systems. A small gripe but not much of an issue especially if it means a more affordable cooler. Despite the absence of such a cable system however, the Arctic AIO actually features less cabling than those two coolers because there's simply no additional power cable. All power is provided by the 4-pin fan cable and lighting is via a second ARGB cable. That being said, this is only true if you use the single connector cable and not the split connector which allows separate control of the radiator fans, VRM fan and pump. Then you're dealing with a lot more connections but it's essentially still a two cable system. Talking briefly about performance as well, I think key to the exceptional numbers is the mandatory contact frame. Keep in mind that some contact frames actually compromise the CPU limiting DRAM OC while they hardly help cooling performance at all like the thermal right socket bend connector. That was a fail. Anyway, I think Arctic gets this right because the machining for their contact frame is impeccable. And for AMD users, the Liquid Freezer 3 has a native AMD offset. So when testing on an AMD system, the performance differences between this cooler and the EK unit I used as a reference should be even larger than what you'll see now. Other parts which contribute to the performance are of course the well-machined 38mm thick radiator which is larger than normal. Just be advised though that you'll need a total height clearance of about 66mm for both fans and radiator. Talking about thick things on this cooler as well, it has a 45cm long nylon braided tubing which looks weight but is rather tough to bend and move around. As for the AIO fans, Arctic uses its premium P12 TST ARGB fans which on their own cost $44 or 1,234 rand. Besides the premium fans, the Liquid Freezer 3 360 is also pre-packed with MX6 thermal compound which on its own is around $14 or 200 rand. If you subtract the cost of the fans and the thermal paste, it means the actual cost of the cooler is very low. And for what Arctic is offering, this is nothing short of excellent value as the total cost of this unit locally is about 2,979 at Wootwear or $110 on Amazon. If you want an even better price that makes this unit even more compelling, consider the black RGB version, which retails for an incredible 2,499, nearly 500 Rand cheaper than the white model. All that aside, installation was fairly straightforward as it's obvious what you need to do to get up and running. The most complex bit is figuring out if you want the all-in-one cable or you want the individual controls for the AIO, VRM and pump. That being said, straightforward installation doesn't mean it is without dangers because you need to remove the default mounting mechanism on Intel boards which briefly exposes the board to risk that would otherwise not exist if you were using a more traditional mounting mechanism. So extra care has to be taken here or it could all end in tears. But that aside, you'll notice that the RGB and fan performance is controlled by the motherboard software as Arctic has no software of their own. I actually prefer this as it simplifies things and I can imagine it makes the entire exercise a lot more affordable and that saving of cost actually translates into the low cost of the cooler for us end users. With all that aside, then what of the performance? Well, I'm using an ROG Maximus Z790 Apex board with no heat sinks on it. So the VRM temps are significantly higher than they would be on a retail board. I tested with the Intel Core i7-14700K, the ROG Z790 Apex, and of course, it's all powered by the XPG Fusion 1600W ATX 3.0 PSU. I also chose a 10-minute runs of Cinebench 2024 multi-core test as while this isn't the maximum load one can put on a CPU, it's more representative of the load than OCCT or Prime95. Yes, temperatures are higher than they would be while gaming, but again, this is the worst case scenario. And lastly, the ambient room temperature where the ARO was being tested was 23 degrees Celsius. As you can see, compared to the EK Phoenix unit I'd been using for eons on end, the Arctic unit is just superior. What you'll also notice is that there's little to no difference between max RPM settings and the default settings as controlled by the motherboard. I think whatever variation in numbers are recorded here is well within the margin of error. 
Not surprising either is the max RPM of the fans is identical for both, on auto and at full speed at just under 2000 revs. Where you will see a slight difference however is in the VRM temps. Between auto and full speed we see a 2 degree drop in temperature, however compared to the EK unit that has no means of cooling the VRM, we can see a sizable difference of about 5 degrees. Again, these differences are not going to translate into performance you can actually perceive, but I can imagine in some edge cases where the Arctic unit will remain stable or offer better performance for the system than the EK AIO. The last thing I want to talk about is the noise profile of the Liquid Freezer 3. With the mic located somewhere, let's say midpoint between the pump and the AIO fans, the additional noise generated over the room or ambient noise floor is about 17 decibels. Compare that with the EK unit which is at 21 decibels and noticeably louder. Overall, I'm rather intrigued by this unit. I had no expectations of it and to have it outperform the cooler I'd been using for the longest time for such a margin is nothing short of fantastic. While I appreciate the ability to configure the VRM and the AIO fan separately from the pump speed, the single cable unified control method works just fine and I doubt noise will be an issue for most people. When it comes to design, aesthetics, ease of use and assembly, it's a great unit that perhaps is only compromised by the increased risk of having to use a contact plate, which I don't think should be too much of an issue for most people or those experienced with building PCs and that sort of thing. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the Arctic Cooling Liquid Freezer 3 ARGB cooler. The price is great, it looks the part and performs like a beast. Honestly, what's not to like here? In closing, what coolers are you using at present? Have you been using the previous versions of this unit or this very one? And how is it treating you? Do you like it? What don't you like about it? Let me know in the comments below. And until the next time, take epic care of yourselves. Remember to share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Take care and peace.